30 years ago, when I was just starting to feel my way into the golf business, I flew out to Oregon with Steve Lesnick, who was one of the grand men of golf. We drove to the property in a downpour. Wind rocked the car and the windshield wipers could hardly keep up with the sheets of rain. Finally, we left the highway and turned onto a small lane that led us right out to the edge of the Pacific Ocean. Huge waves were crashing on the rocks and a gust of wind nearly ripped off the door when Steve tried to get out of the car. If you think people are coming here to play golf, he said, you're out of your friggin' mind. There are two kinds of golf, Lynx golf and all the others, and they're as different from each other as a caddy is from a golf cart. I suspected that there were others like me, increasingly disenchanted with the kind of golf that was served up to the American public. Forgettable, formulaic designs, pretentious clubhouses, signature holes, golf carts on paved paths that made you feel like a token in a giant board game. When I talked to the crew that was about to start building the first course at Bannon Dunes, I told them to regard it as though their work would still exist 500 years from now. Was that too much to ask? Anything else would have been too little. The first nudge for writing this book came from my sons, Michael and Chris. They pointed out that many things have changed in the 20 years since the opening of Bannon Dunes. Though I was skeptical at first, the idea had staying power, and what evolved is the narrative you're now reading. Not a memoir, but more like a group portrait in which I am surrounded by many others. To tell anything close to the complete story, you would have to include all the people who've worked alongside me, my sons, architects, and business partners, the caddies, the greenskeepers, and staff members who give the resorts their personality. Success really does have many fathers, and I see myself as only one of them.